happy monday first grade it's so good to see you back and we are going to start chapter 15 of gooseberry park yet another muckraker do you know what a muckraker is a muckraker you probably know someone who is a muckraker who's just kind of always into everybody's business and always likes to stir up trouble okay that's what a muckraker is and if you notice at the top of this chapter or where the title of the chapter is you guys see who's back Weasels. Weasels are muckrakers. So let's go ahead and read this chapter together. There are muckrakers everywhere, mucking about in everyone's business, and Gooseberry Park certainly had its fair share, especially on the west side. It didn't take Kona long to find another weasel, and this time Kona had an advantage. This time Kona had nerve. As Professor Albert and Kona walked toward the park the following morning, the little silver and black bat zipped around in the sky just above their heads. Occasionally, the bat faked a dive bomb straight for the big dog's nose, which caused Kona to leap and Professor Albert to shriek. What is that bat doing, Kona? Professor Albert cried, waving his arms wildly at the little figure in the sky. Kona knew exactly what that bat was doing, and he knew exactly what a good dog should do in such a case, but he really wasn't in the mood. But he stood tall and barked and barked and barked. Professor Albert was very proud. Murray was hysterical. However, the mischievous bat did keep a low profile for the rest of the walk. Then once Professor Albert was settled in reading, this time a book about snails, Murray flew down to join Kona, who was heading for the west side. Very funny, Murray, said Kona as he raced across the park. You thought so too, called the bat from the air. Oh, I was dying, dying. Kona gave a huff of disapproval and ran on. When they reached the infamous west side of Gooseberry Park, Murray did an, oh, that's just awful routine, and sure enough, a weasel popped up out of nowhere. Something going on, he said in a low voice. There certainly is, if you must know, answered the little bat, perching on a bush near Kona's head. The dog says he knows the identity of a thief, a thief who stole a valuable piece of jewelry from a friend of mine. And do you know what this dog wants me to pay him for the name of that thief? Now, is that awful or what? The weasel narrowed his weaselly eyes, a common response among weasels, and said to Kona, That so? Dog's got to make a living, said Kona. The weasel nodded, looking shrewdly at the dog. What makes you think you know who the thief is? The weasel asked Kona. None of your business, said the dog. What's this piece of jewelry anyway? asked the weasel. None of your business again, said the dog. It's a glow in the dark watch, said Murray. The weasel's eyes lit up. At once, Kona could see that the weasel knew who had the watch. Kona finally believed it. Weasels knew everything. Now all Kona and Murray had to do was bait him. What's the dog's price? The weasel hissed him toward Murray. Egg rolls, answered the bat. Egg rolls, repeated the weasel. How many egg rolls? Six of them, can you believe it? answered the bat. I told him only three, but no, he wants six. The little bat grinned as Kona gave him a sharp look. Six, huh? said the weasel, thinking things over. He moved closer to where the bat perched and said quietly, Suppose I give you the information you want, and you give me five egg rolls. Five, cried the bat. Highway robbery. The weasel smiled. You won't get the information anywhere else for less, he said. Oh, yeah? Just watch me. The little bat lifted to fly away. Three, shouted the weasel. Three egg rolls. The thought had him drooling. Murray perched again. Two, he said. I bring two, and you tell me who's got the watch. The weasel knew Murray had him. Any weasel in the park would probably sell the name for just one egg roll. Weasels had no scruples, and they were all so sick of eating mice. Deal, hissed the weasel. Deal, shouted Murray, and off he flew to the Chinese dumpster. Kona, pretending to be angry at losing six egg rolls, glared at the weasel and trotted away, actually back to the south side, where he could wait for Murray's return. The old professor had fallen asleep. Snails can be so tedious. By the time Murray finally came barreling back to Kona through the trees, Murray landed on the professor's head. Murray, Kona jumped up. Be careful. Don't worry, said the bat. I have very delicate little feet. He can't feel a thing. Who has the watch? Kona asked. 
First, let me say that if I ever see another weasel again, it will be too soon. Who has it? I'm ashamed to tell you, said the bat, dropping his head. Who, said Kona. It's a disgrace, said the bat. Who, said Kona. And I want you to know that not every family, that every family has its black sheep, said the bat, and I'm not it. Who, Marie, who, cried the dog. My cousin Ralph, answered the bat. What? Your cousin, Kona asked? Your cousin stole Stumpy's watch? Ralph the Mouth, we call him. I eat all the time. If you think I'm bad, you should meet Ralph. But why did he steal Tump Stumpy's watch? asked Kona. Oh, it's tacky, so tacky, said Murray. But why? The light attracts moths, Murray answered. Ralph, who lives on the roof of Mally's department store, by the way, Ralph just sits there on the roof with the watch glowing every night and his mouth wide open. Isn't that disgusting? I can't understand who'd want a moth anyway with all the dumpsters in the world. Why, I found whole pepperoni pizzas, chicken nuggets, french toast with syrup. Oh, Murray, said Kona impatiently, forget Ralph's bad taste. You have to get that watch. Murray sighed. Oh, boy, is my Aunt Olive going to be mad at me? Aunt Olive? Ralph's mother. She'll never speak to me again if I take that watch. She probably thinks he won it in a poker game. I'll never speak to you again if you don't take it, said Kona. No more Thanksgiving dinners in Aunt Olive's house, said Murray, shaking his head sadly. You have to, Kona said sternly. No more beet casseroles. You have to do it, Murray. No more mashed turnips. Murray, I am not kidding. No more fried liver. Hey, wait a minute. I hate all that stuff. Ugh, ah. Yes, oh yes, I'll get that watch. I will love getting that watch. Just watch me. Ha ha, get it? Murray danced on Professor Albert's head. The old professor mumbled and shifted. Hurry, Murray, Kona urged. We need that watch by tonight. Some people will be running through the trees on Miller Street all evening. I'm sure that you need that watch. You've got it, said Missouri. Said Missouri. Mm, even teachers, guys. Even teachers. You've got it, said Murray. By supper time, by the way. Is this lasagna night? Hurry, Kona implored. I'm off, the little bat said, leaping from the professor's head. Save me some garlic bread, Kona. Away the bat flew, a tiny speck in the sky. Kona watched him until he was out of sight. We've almost found you, Stump, the good dog whispered. Almost. All right, chapter 16, The Sock. Murray arrived with the watch still in time for lasagna. He zipped down the chimney, popped out into the living room, and plunked the precious object at the feet of Kona, who was sleeping beneath Gwendolyn's bowl. Professor Albert had gone out to play bingo. Wonderful job, dear, Gwendolyn applauded with her claws. Kona jumped to his feet at the sound of her voice. It's here? We have it? he asked. Ta-da! Murray pointed to the watch on the floor. The dog took one look and nearly burst into tears, but he knew that would be a very undog-like thing to do. Murray, Kona said. After dinner, you'll have to take the watch up to the roof and stay there for the rest of the night until Stumpy finds you. Right-o, said Murray. I could use some fresh air anyway. You wouldn't believe my cousin Ralph's apartment. Ugh, all those pieces of moth. It was disgusting. Did you have any trouble, dear? asked Gwendolyn. Nah, said Murray. Ralph was napping, his second favorite hobby. Besides, I've been sneaking things out of places all my life. If Stumpy shows up tonight, you'll have more sneaking to do, said Kona. Sneaking her in. A snap, said Murray. This house is full of holes. Wake me up, dear, if I'm sleeping, said Gwendolyn. Me too, said Kona. I will never understand animals who sleep at night, Murray said, shaking his head. They miss all the good stuff. After he gobbled down a huge plate of lasagna and garlic bread, the little bat picked up the watch and flew out to the roof to wait for Stumpy. Inside the house, the night seemed endless. The professor came back home and went to bed. Kona and Gwendolyn looked down and tended to the sleeping babies a while then returned upstairs. They were restless, constantly listening for footsteps on the roof, forever looking out the window. What time is it, dear? Gwendolyn asked. Well, the news is over. Professor Albert's in bed. It must be past midnight. Oh, poor little Stumpy, said Gwendolyn, all alone out there, worried so for her children. Natural disasters are hard on families, especially families that live in trees, added Kona. The old crab nodded. The two friends talked and talked and waited and waited. Up on the roof, Murray was keeping himself occupied by making lists in his head. First, he listed things that were green. Limes, olives, Christmas trees, Kermit the Frog. He listed yellow things. 
corn, sunflowers, lemons, big bird, blue things, swimming pools, berries, the sky, cookie monster. Marie had watched a lot of Sesame Street at Professor Albert's house. He had gone through a purple list, an orange list, a red list, and a white list, and was just beginning a striped list when he heard someone in the trees whisper his name. Marie. The little bat jumped. For a second, he forgot about Stumpy and thought his cousin Ralph had found him. Nope, he said. Murray, it is you. A little shadow with a big fluffy tail leaped from way up in the trees and landed on the roof with a thump. Murray knew that tail. Give it to guys. It's Stumpy. Stumpy? Stumpy, he jumped up and down, flapping his wings. Good golly, Miss Molly. The little red squirrel scurried across the roof and into the light of the watch. Tears were streaming down her face, which made tears stream down Murray's face, and the two stood there on the roof together, hugging and crying. My babies, sobbed Stumpy. Fat and sassy, said Murray. Kona, the little squirrel cried. Fat and bossy, Murray cried harder. Stumpy laughed and began to wipe away Murray's tears. And you, Murray, she asked gently. Just fat, answered the little bat with a teary grin, and I bet I have the worst garlic breath. Murray sneaked Stumpy through a crack in the house's foundation, and the little mother ran straight across the basement to where her babies lay sleeping. She jumped into the box and picked up all three at once, holding them tight and kissing their little red heads. The children were drowsy, half asleep, but they seemed to recognize their lost mother, for they held tight to her with their tiny paws. Murray thought he might start bawling again. Where are Kona and Gwendolyn? Stumpy asked over her children's sleeping heads. I forgot, cried Murray. I was supposed to tell them first thing. Murray flew up the basement steps and did a snappy tap dance across the living room floor. Kona raised his big head. He looked at Murray. Is she here? Kona asked anxiously. With a big grin, Murray nodded excitedly and pointed toward the basement. Stomp, Kona called. He picked up Gwendolyn, whose antenna flew at the sound of Stumpy's name and everyone ran for the basement. The joy the friends shared in the reunion was the best treasure of all to be found on Miller Street that evening. And Kona surprised himself. He cried. All right, the next chapter we're going to start tomorrow is chapter 17, The Wonders of Technology. Oh, you know what guys? I told you happy Monday and we don't have school on Monday. Happy Tuesday. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.